everyone and welcome back to this fantastic episode of the Isha Tech Business Series. I'm sure that you had an awesome weekend. I can say for myself that it was quite busy and um, I mean, it was a time for me to catch up on social media trends, which by the way, I'm going to come back to. But first, I'd like to ask how my co-host um, weekend went as well. Damola. I had to take a good rest. You know, it's been a very hectic uh, week and I was borderline of breaking down so I had to just take a rest and you know get some time off yeah I agree rest is necessary you know um, after the hustle and bustle of every other thing I told myself that you know what entities are going concerned your health is also as important as um, the work that you put in so hope you are better now Damala Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Thank you very much. Fantastic. So, talking about social media trend now, um, was there any point you were following up on social media? Because, I mean, there were a lot of activities, but some of the things that just, you know, sort of excited me during the weekend was the fact that um, we had one of the acclaimed African giants, um, Bonoboy, win the Grammy, which, although it's not the first Nigerian to, but it, it just made a lot of... Um, you know, impact, and then as well as um, whiskey, then seeing David Doe in coming to America too was also very exciting. I mean, it sort of um, lit up a lot of people's hearts. In fact, those that were beefing him. So I think that um, we're making impact in that industry. What do you think, Damola? Yes, yeah, it was very, it was very interesting to see all of these things that you said. I mean. Uh, Coming to America too was 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 a nice movie, and then seeing the video was was quite interesting and quite nice. And I mean, congratulations to Whiskey and Bonaboy. And um, I mean, it just speaks to uh, the kind of impact that um, uh, our music, you know, is doing around the world, and and the levels that it can still go to because uh, you know these guys are putting in the hard work and they're putting out fantastic records you know back to back and they are getting the recognition that they deserve yeah so talking about recognition i mean that that tends to show that there's a lot going on in the gig economy or um should i say the passion economy because we've been having a lot of people that are you know social media influencers a lot of people that are in that space that are beginning to gain traction and so it's showing that there's actually um a lot of opportunities, insurance opportunities as well within that um, space, right, Damola? What What do you think about fashion economy now? Yeah, I think it's 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 the future, right? Uh, we are beginning to see a lot of people um, engaged in a number of things, gigs, you know, as, as they call it, you know, influencers, like you said, social media influencers, you know, you know, and people doing work online, you know using Fiverr and, and things like that. And those are things that we definitely begin to see, especially, I mean, following the pandemic and, you know, the future of work generally, you know, there'll be a lot of leverage of the internet and, and, and things like that, remote working and things like that. So the nature of work has changed forever. So how do we realize that fact as an insurance industry and then create solutions for this market is something that is exciting to hear about. Okay, and so because of that, yeah, um, there's there's already someone that has been doing that in Australia, I think for over four years now. She's a power woman. Yeah, we'll be speaking with Nabi Meriam. Nabi Meriam is the founder of Cover Hero. Cover Hero is an insurtech startup based out of Sydney, Australia. Yes, you heard that right. Sydney, Australia. So uh, we're going to be speaking with her as regards the gig economy, you know, why she you know, has gone into that space and some of the things that she has done and the benefits of that solution to the gig uh, economy. And what, what exactly the future holds for that you know, segment. So... So, yeah, it's going to be super interesting to hear our thoughts on all of that. All right. So, on that note, please don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Hello, this is Dr. Robin Kira from Hamburg, Germany, listening to IBS Podcast. 
Hi, Nabi. Hey, how are you going? Yeah, I'm very well, thank you. Very well, thank you. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. It's super early on a Saturday morning. I would rather be sleeping, but hey, you know, we're all here talking about insurance technology. Yeah, great. I mean, that's, that's super, super interesting. And I mean, uh, I'm talking to the future here because, I mean, it's Friday here. <laughs> so that, that's, that's quite interesting. That's right. <laughs> Right. Yes, I can tell you what happens in the future. Nothing different. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for the heads up. <laughs> thank you. Great, great, great. Uh, so let's start off. Uh, who is Nabi? Um, tell us about yourself. I um, I am a, a, have a social science background. I worked in academia for a very long time. Before I started Cover Hero, I started Cover Hero about four years ago after having a really terrible insurance experience. And that got me curious enough and also a little bit angry about the insurance industry. And I thought, you know, something needs to happen. So I gave I gave it a shot. I started and, and here we are in uh, 2021. Wow, that, that's 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 quite interesting. You said you mentioned that uh, you had a, a, a not so pleasant insurance experience. Uh, you care to share what that is, and I mean how that really factored into you know starting off uh, the cover hero journey. Yeah, so I was uh, working with my boyfriend about four years ago, both entrepreneurs, and he got very sick. Uh, just before his birthday, which was two weeks away, and um, and it was cancer, and we had to lodge all these insurance claims, and all of it got rejected, and it was a very traumatic experience. Um, so then, you know, the relationship ended. He recovered. I was, you know, I had no job. I was broke at home, heartbroken, and very angry at the insurance industry because I lost so much money. I lost pretty much everything. And I, um, I called a friend of mine that I did my previous startup with, and he was working on this insurance thing. And I said, "Hey, dude, what are you working on? I want, I want in. I want to know what you're doing." Um, and that's kind of how it started. And then it evolved over the last four years. Not having an insurance background, it was a massive learning curve for me to understand. Uh, so I traveled all around the world speaking to insure tax and insurers um, in Europe, in North America, in Asia. I have spoken to over the last four years, probably over 300 insurance executives and a lot of insurance short tech startups and and spoken at many many conferences around around this topic so it's like an accelerated phd on insurance in the last four years <laughs> yeah that, that, yeah because uh okay so before we go into the to, to the really uh, serious stuff uh i want to get to really know about you and i mean your your journeys and your background your career and things like that uh, but then let's start off with with life in Australia. How how are people in, in Australia today? I mean, following the COVID nineteen and, and things like that. And I mean, if I'm coming to Australia to, to, tomorrow, I mean, what what what, what things should I be, be trying out when I come? So the the first thing is when you come to Australia, you're gonna get quarantined for fourteen days. So uh, we, we have strict quarantine rules here. But once the quarantine is over, then you can do whatever you want. Anything is possible. You can go to the beach. You can go to restaurants. You can go to parties. Um, and it's it's like life, pretty much life before COVID. There's still precaution. Um, still wear masks on public transport. Uh Outside of that, people are returning back to work. A lot of people are still working remotely. I'm still working remotely, but I've started going back into the city one day a week. Still, the conferences and stuff face-to-face are starting off. So I am, for the first time, uh, traveling to another state for International Women's Day in March for a face-to-face conference. So... 
that would be interesting. You know, we also, I mean, we started off a conference last year and I mean, we are super um, hopeful that we can have a, a physical one this year. So so we have our fingers crossed. Uh, things are, are getting a lot better here as well too. Yeah, but I mean, precaution is still very much advised and things like that. Yeah, so uh, I mean, I, I, I don't mean to be a spoiler spot because I mean, you you mentioned a lot of things interesting there about Australia, but why do you have so much spiders? <laughs> <laughs> well, you you should know I actually have a spider in my living room right now. What? Yeah. <laughs> and about wow. about a few weeks ago, I was going to bed. And I always have a glass of water next to my bed. And when I went to bed, there was a big spider inside my my glass of water. Wow. I was like it's okay. scared. I was so scared. It was so hot that day. The spider probably was thirsty. Then I had to mm. I had to kill it. Like I couldn't sleep next to a spider. But otherwise, you know, if a spider's there, we just let it be. It's it's part of it's it's a big part of you know, Australia, so we let the spider <laughs> just chill out with us, you know? <laughs> uh, that, that, that's quite interesting. That's quite interesting. Mm. Yeah, so, I mean, from normalizing living with spiders now to um, normalizing your career being around insurance, how did that journey come around, right? Uh, I, I was looking at your LinkedIn profile and I think you started off been a lecturer or something? Yeah, so I was in academia for a very long time and I was kind of bored and before before Cover Hero I had another startup which was a ride share platform for for kids and then um, as I said after this traumatic experience I was <laughs> determined to solve the problem of insurance so I was like let's start and I just mm. gave it a shot. Uh, that's that's <laughs> That's interesting. That's that, that's very very interesting. Uh, now that you're in the insurance space, maybe you can start off by probably you can share insights about the Australian insurance market and maybe the insurance insurtech landscape. You know, and what what the impact of COVID has had on that space. I think within the larger insurers. Uh, COVID has kind of like slowed their innovation. Um, And as it is Australia compared to other markets, like for example, in North America, uh, it moves a lot slower from the insurer side. But in Shortex, we have about, I think about 120 in Shortex in the Australian ecosystem. We have in in Shortex Australia. Um, in terms of the types of insurtechs that we see, majority of them are enabling technology. So um, various different kinds of solutions to help the incumbents acquire customers better or save the costs uh, within the organizations or better underwriting or claims. A lot of claims technology um, is out there little tools um, that can help. We, on the other hand, are a full stack. So looking at creating new insurance products, building the whole insurance stack from the ground up um, and creating consumer-facing products. Our product is embedded insurance. Hey, this is Brian Falchuk from Boston, Massachusetts in the United States of America. I want to give a shout out to the InsurTech business series, Falumi and Damala, what you are doing to help move the industry forward in the African continent, but also more broadly for the industry at large is so incredibly important. As I think about the future of our industry, it's conversations like the ones you're having that will help us move forward. So congratulations on the success of the show. Please keep at it. So it's slightly different. A lot of players are coming into the market. Uh, it's still very frustrating in the Australian market because it's it's very slow and 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 small compared to North America. Like for example, Australian population is twenty five million. 
Um, whereas you look at North America, it's about what 350 million. So you can see the size. Mm. But with uh, 150 players, that's 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 impressive. Uh, it seems like uh, there is a lot more uh, push towards adoption of technology. Absolutely, there is a lot, um, and a lot of the you know SaaS kind of companies, you can very yeah. easily scale up all around the world. You mm. don't, you don't have to limit mm. yourself. But for us scaling to other jurisdictions is a little bit slower licensing compliance regulation all of those, those mm, things mm. kind of slows it down mm, I think that that's, that's a good segue to um, asking about cover hero and you know can you tell us a bit about about that and you know, why are you focused on the market segment that you are actually focused on? So for us, uh, we like solving problems that we face. So being an entrepreneur for so long and after this this traumatic experience, the crux of it is when you are a self-employed person, you don't have a financial safety net. And if something happens to you, uh, what are you going to fall back on? So protecting your income is an extremely valuable and a, should be a fundamental part of doing business is is protecting that income that you earn uh, because you never know when something's going to happen. Nobody predicted pan- the pandemic and a health crisis is something that that we we can't predict that you can yeah. uh, whether it's a mental health crisis or physical health crisis and financial well-being is deeply correlated with uh, your mental well-being. So b- because of the nature of all of these things and having built a marketplace before, it's the cross section of insurance and entrepreneurship. So it's a very easy thing for us to design and develop because we live and breathe the problem that we are trying to solve. Mm. So that's why we designed Hustle Cover as a product to protect the income of of hustlers, all kinds of hustlers, self-employed people, and power the passion economy because Mm -hmm. in about three years, which is not a very long time, uh, more than 50% of the global workforce is going to be self-employed and financial services system isn't designed to cater for it. So we are in a very good position to fill mm-hmm. this massive gap in the market. Mm. That, that's, that's huge, right? And, uh, but I mean, to, to really just uh, shed more light about I mean, what exactly this market is you now for a lot of people, I mean, for insurance generally, uh, we are more concerned about the, uh, uh, you know, the commercial lines, you know, and things like that. Uh, even the retail uh, market is not so much uh, explored, right? And then now you're looking at a, a segment of, of 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 the market that really there have not been uh, products that fits, you know, their their way of operation and things like that, and their needs, right? Uh, and so, how does uh, uh, Nabi? How does uh, your business define? In this gig economy, this passion economy that you explained? Yeah, there are so many misconceptions around the gig economy. So let's 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 define what the gig economy is. There are multiple buckets of the gig economy. So there is platform workers, so you people that are using platforms to monetize their passion. Then there, and even within the platform ecosystem, there are uh, episodic transactions that happen. For example, Uber drivers, right? Mm-hmm. Um, they they transact. They they get paid per transaction. Uh, yeah. And if you a contrast to that would be Instagram. If you are an Instagram influencer or a digital marketer, and we see huge groups of people in this particular segment. They they do reels, they do sell their digital courses and people sign up, they sell merchandise. Yeah. So using a platform to monetize. Shopify is a really great example. Um, you have all of these knowledge work platforms. So every single industry that you can imagine, there is a platform that is democratizing 
and and lowering the barriers of access. So it's very easy to start a business today with all of the digital platforms that are available. So if we look the way we structure the the knowledge, sorry, the passion economy is if you look at Maslow's hierarchy, you have workers across the spectrum even in the passion economy or the gig economy. So the financial needs and the requirements are different across that spectrum. So people at the bottom of the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, their basic needs are putting food on the table, having a roof over their head. So they're not necessarily thinking about uh, financial well-being or savings or retirement because they have to get their, their needs met, the basic needs met. And as you go above um, to the top around self-actualization. You see a lot of people in the knowledge workforce um, that are high income earners, that are quite financially literate, still running their own businesses and the core problems of running an own business on your own as a single person is you have to make a lot of decisions. You have to build the business, do the marketing, design the product, uh, pay invoices and the everyday running of the business and then thinking about your own financial well-being. So if you think about a corporate job, human resources was responsible for employee well-being now when you are self-employed you you don't have a human resources department so therefore you have to think about it so we are seeing uh various different kinds of companies coming into the market. Uh, Payday Lenders is a very good example of a fintech solution helping the same segment that we're helping. So we're helping from an insurance perspective. So we're seeing lots of other fintech solutions coming into the market, helping people save for retirement, protecting their income now, protecting their income for the future and helping people invest. So we will see a huge huge growth of various different kinds of financial solutions targeting this segment mm, mm, that's 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 quite interesting and uh for for cover hero right um how how has i mean from when it all started off and now i mean i know that things are still going to go some way in the future now, but from when you started up until now, how has the uh, reception been? What kind of impact has 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 your business been able to make uh, to lives of, of gig economy workers? It's still very early day, days for us at the moment. Um, it took us a long time to get to market. There are a number of challenges in terms of, you know, finding the right capacity provider, building the product, raising capital. Um, so we have some very big partnerships that we'll be announcing soon. Uh, this year, last year was all about uh, preserving cash. How do we respond to a crisis? How do we make sure that we get through to the other side of this pandemic and still have a business to run. Um, So that was our strategy for last year and this year is all about growth. So very excited about our growth journey and and looking at expansion in the next coming years. Mm, That's that's, that's interesting. So uh, I know you mentioned um, what what last year was and and how you reacted to to the pandemic, but um, did the pandemic in itself change anything for you or for your business as regards how you approach you know, the market? Uh, did, it, did it validate anything that you were, you were doing before or you say, oh, this has to change or something like that? Yeah, definitely. Because because of the pandemic, it accelerated the need for this product. Because many people were furloughed and lost their jobs and, and that was an opportunity for people to start their businesses and we're seeing a lot of people start their own little side hustles and and jumping into entrepreneurship and micro entrepreneurship 
is is rising. It is uh, not that well understood by the market. Um, so that was one of the best things that happened. For example, if you look at the the global trends, the companies that really thrived and survived was digital businesses in education, uh, e-commerce, and and online retail was a huge growth sector. And if you look at the interconnectedness of micro entrepreneurs and these sectors were driven by micro micro entrepreneurship so people can start an e-commerce store in a week and get it up and running and people can sell stuff online um and if we think about education and online courses same anybody can design an online course and sell Acquiring customers is so accessible. You just run some Instagram ads or Facebook ads, build a simple funnel, and then you have a steady stream of income. So it made things possible because the pandemic forced people to think differently, to find a way to survive in a very unfortunate circumstances. And human beings are extremely adaptable to challenges and change and that was the outcome of of the pandemic oh that, that's 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 great and uh, i know you mentioned uh, a bit about people needing to uh, think differently and, and approach it differently because of the pandemic um, uh, so does that um speak as well to the insurers who you are partnering with. I mean, you mentioned that you're, you're looking to to announce a few partnerships, a couple of partnerships here. But so, the uh, the pandemic changed things. I mean, in terms of how your engagement has been with with insurers. Uh, not not for us because we don't sell software to the insurers. So for companies that was that that were looking at insurers as clients to buy their technology, it may have okay. affected them because uh, the company is opted in for crisis response strategy to um, to pause things. So for us, our, all of our partnerships were already in place. Uh, so it didn't really affect. Yeah. Mm, okay. Okay. Uh, uh, so m- maybe uh, if you can share, like, um, how exactly your model works? Uh, is this based on partnerships or? Uh, so maybe I could just uh, give it time, like maybe just share what how your your model works and how people can definitely get to now benefit from from these products that you offer. Hi everybody, my name is Bent and I'm the founder and CEO of MTech and we are based in Kenya. I am very passionate about the disruption of the intro tech space and together with our model MTech, we are actually serving insurance platform and also white labor solutions for the industry. Please keep on listening to InsurTech Business Series podcast and I hope to see all of you at the conference in December. So currently we have a retail product. Um, people can just go to our website and and buy the right insurance. It takes about 30 seconds to, to buy income protection. We cover uh, 20 different occupations, starting from drivers, riders, to software engineers, YouTubers, Instagram mm-hmm. influencers, mm-hmm. everything and anything in between um, we can mm-hmm. cover. So we partner with Lloyd's cover holder here in Australia called Agile Underwriting and we design products together with them and we build the technology to deliver on this particular solution. That's great. That's great. So looking at the InsurTech space globally now, I know that uh, you speak at um, events and, and you're quite uh, active on LinkedIn and you know and engaging conversations around InsurTech and, and how we can really use that to change the way we we offer insurance to people and and, and i mean you you yourself you, your company is, is pioneering a, a a sector that is really quite interesting and what what, what do you think the future holds for insurtech uh, globally uh, there are a lot of activities that have happened in the past year you know ipos a plan of ipos you know insurers you know investing in short techs you know and things like that 
what what do you think uh, the future holds for InsurTech generally? I, in InsurTech, we ha- we have to look at various different solutions because it's so broad. Um, if we look mm-hmm. at customer facing direct to customer products, uh, we would see a lot of specialization and a lot of verticalization across insurance lines um, and more. And then there are the enabling technologies that are enhancing the customer experience or improving uh, data is going to be very interesting. If we look at the banking or fintech sector broadly, open banking um, is so far ahead of the curve than open insurance. I think we're, we're still a little bit far behind when it comes to proliferation of the data it's still locked up inside the insurance companies so when that data becomes available we would see exponential growth from the insure techs in terms of designing better products being able to really leverage this data that is that is stuck inside the insurance companies. So that would be uh, something very, very exciting. Um, And, you know, cyber insurance has been such a hot topic. And um, so that's that's very trendy at the moment. A lot of uh, connected devices, IoT devices, it's still very early days around um, connected devices and and, and leveraging that. Uh, Blockchain is another interesting interesting thing to talk about we still haven't seen mass adoption i think there's some interesting case studies and experiments um in white papers uh something that i am deeply interested is in climate uh or decarbonization solutions and integration Mm. of climate Mm. technology into the finance sector as a mechanism of meeting the net zero emission paris agreement target and uh, and there are there are some cool companies working on these kinds of solutions. So I'm very excited to see um, the intersection of climate technology and fintech and insurtech coming together to provide solutions that would enable customer choice to reduce the carbon footprint or to decarbonize the planet and financial services sector as a mechanism to drive that change because if we want to reduce um, or or decarbonize the planet, there are two ways to do it. The corporates need to reduce their carbon emission and then consumers need to reduce their carbon emission. So, um, And that's the way to go about it and to be able to do that. We can design technology and products with these mechanisms embedded into it to make it super easy for consumers to reduce their carbon Mm. footprint. A few things that you mentioned there that uh, quite interest me. Uh, firstly, is the blockchain. Uh, so this is uh, something that uh, I'm, I'm learning about. I mean, the old blockchain idea. I know that there is usually this misconception. Um, you know, cryptocurrency, blockchain. Uh, I mean, cryptocurrency currency is kind of like a use case for blockchain technology, right? And so uh, it's going to be interesting to see how insurance, you know. You know, takes advantage of uh, blockchain technology with all of the opportunities that it can bring. You know, uh, it's I mean, it's still early days, right? So there are a lot of learnings that still uh, has to go. You know, into that. So, so super interesting. And then um, embedded insurance. I think I think that is something huge. That's something that uh, you know we are definitely going to begin to see. And I mean, th- these two concepts really just uh, point. Um, if, um, something to me about uh, you know being closer to the customer and and uh, the idea around trust. Uh, so I, I mean, I wanted to ask here now. Uh, you know, insurance. I mean, worldwide, right? Uh, struggles with this uh, issue of trust you know, and things like that. How is that um, in, uh, in your part of the world? And uh, do you think that all of these technologies? Uh, in itself can help to solve this issue. Embedded insurance, without a doubt, is the future. Uh, We see embedded finance kind of maturing across 
the board in certain verticals. For example, it started off with payments technology like the Stripe, uh, like companies. Then you see buy now, pay later companies like Klarna and Afterpay, um, micro lending products coming into the market, being closer to the customer. And then in embedded insurance uh, across the verticals, it it is definitely happening. Uh, it's still very early days. I think the insurers are the ones that are nervous about it uh, because it's a totally new paradigm for for the insurers and the incumbents because they are not used to distribution through technology and that's very new and therefore the systems and the processes aren't designed for such radical transformation so it's yeah. it's the it's a concept that is difficult for the incumbents to comprehend one of the challenges of that is in technology we have cross functional teams designing the product um, with designers engineers compliance all the different functionalities, all of the ingredients of the cake needs to be there. Whereas in the insurance industry, there is no cake. All the ingredients are scattered everywhere and nobody is trying to bake a cake. And embedded insurance Mm -hmm. is like baking the cake where you put all of these ingredients together. And then once you put all those ingredients together, then only you can have the cake. So to help an industry that has a function without the cake, to put those ingredients together is a big, big shift. And if you look at the value chain, you have the reinsurers, you have the broker, then you have the primary care carriers, then you have another broker, then you have an underwriting agency and you have another broker. So it's such a broker led industry without the technology and the insurance products are not designed for the customer that's paying for it. The insurance product was designed for the broker to sell it to an end user. So when you're designing product for the end user and you have no deep insight and you are not close to the customer is going to be very very challenging and uh, with with our experience insurers are keen to learn is deeply frustrating for us because <laughs> the time and energy that is taken to educate and shift their thinking to build trust to make them feel comfortable enough with the technology is 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 the most challenging thing about uh, being in this space like building products is easy connecting with customers is easy designing amazing products is easy finding partners is easy Helping insurers shift their thinking is like trying to create a new religion. <laughs> for for you now, um, how how is it is it to build and run an insure tech? Uh, I'm asking this uh, maybe selfishly. To build an insure tech depends on what you're building, depends on what solutions that you want to build. Mm-hmm. Uh, entrepreneurship is difficult. Building products requires talent and resilience and ideas and, and partnerships. So building anything is difficult because you need a lot of patience. A lot of things might not go the way you want it to go. And when you get knocked back down, do you have the capability of getting back up again and and thriving and striving and not be disheartened because you have to knock on many, many doors um, for even one door to open. So th- that that is the challenge with entrepreneurship or starting anything is one access to network, connecting, having the courage and bravery to persevere to get to the end goal, which is the vision of the company. Uh, sounds sounds interesting and, and something that you really need to be passionate about and focus on, on the goal and just walk through on any of the challenges that, that, that you might face. So 
Yeah. So yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for that. So, uh, so for Cover Hero, what what does the future hold? Uh, I mean, you still you mentioned earlier about that it being early days and and uh, looking at partnerships to be announced soon, which that's quite interesting. But uh, what does the future hold? Where where, where do you see? Uh, cover hero you know playing in, in, in a couple of years time I think for us is being the number one uh, brand that solves the problem for self-employed people that is our end goal to be embedded into um, any platform that has that is part of the passion economy and that would mm. be the holy grail wow that's 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 very very specific and, and I'm, I'm, I like the fact that you you focus on that space uh, which uh, like you like you mentioned this is growing the growing space and there are a lot of opportunities that would definitely open up uh, so I know you have uh, a podcast series can you tell us a bit about about what, what that is and how people can really uh, connect and listen to it yeah hustle chat is about entrepreneurship and the passion economy we like talking about uh lead talking to leaders in fintech and and general startup ecosystem around uh topics that are trending topics that that i deeply care about as well and it's about love life and entrepreneurship in a very kind of holistic way it's available mm. on any podcasting platform uh on spotify and and a whole range of other platforms you can there's also the vlog on uh youtube on our channel on cover hero and then on our website as well so you can go to uh hustle cover com and you can you can listen to it you can watch the videos can engage uh, and we have some very exciting guests for this year's podcast this year we kick it off in uh, late April um, so for YouTube the long one hour um, conversations are really really powerful and for audio is also very very powerful but then for Instagram and and LinkedIn you need shorter sharper content um, so that's that's our thinking all right that's 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 quite interesting and definitely definitely everyone listening you must check that out so before we let you go so we have uh, a project that we are currently running we call it insurtech business series women in insurance program and really uh, that came about because generally i mean and this has not just here in nigeria right uh even around africa and a lot of a number of people that we've spoken with they've alluded to the fact that there are not so many women playing uh at the top level in the industry and then we are looking at insure tech now and uh, we are seeing that uh, not only is uh, not so many people, women playing at the top level in insurance but even in tech there are not so many women who are leading tech companies uh and that's something that we've definitely seen all right so uh, it's going to be interesting to hear i mean what your experience has been uh, you know as a woman you know starting off on this journey entering into the insurance space or, or maybe the, the the Australian market is, is quite different from the other parts of the world I think diversity is a challenge across the board if we look at the top insurance companies I can't remember a single female CEO or from the incumbent side now if we mm. look at the insure tech mm. sides there are more female insure tech CEOs in the startup community than in the actual big in incumbent companies so that is a very sad statistic mm. Um, mm. and I think the next generation would be different which is which is our generation um, there are a whole range of female CEOs CEOs in insure tech space, even just in Australia, like I can just say off the top of my head, uh, five different female CEOs of insure tech companies in Australia. I think Australia, Australian startup ecosystem has a, a quite a substantial number of female uh, CEOs, but the challenge is not whether there are female CEOs in this sector. The challenge is women don't get funding women get over mentored mm. and underfunded mm. uh, and that is the real pipeline issue the pipeline issue is the lack of capital flowing into 
female led companies because of subconscious biases systemic mm. uh, processes that are inbuilt uh, that prevents women from having access to the networks uh, and that is one of the challenges why the industry is the way it is and that is a real issue because if we look at the biases that we have and we know we have these biases without women and diverse thought in the product design phase we will automate and build more division into the software that we design so yeah. it's not a nice to yeah. have it is fundamental for humanity uh to have women and and diverse groups represented in the product design because if all these products are designed by one group um and those biases within that group get spilt in and that is quite dangerous yeah yeah and i agree with you and that's why we 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 definitely want to engage all of this conversation and see how we can help to spur things to change right so so yeah uh so is is cover hero and uh, looking for uh, funds at the moment or uh, you just focused on on getting all of these partnerships i know you mentioned growth is is funding part of that yeah we are currently in the middle of a capital raise so uh it is very very exciting time as well so if there are anyone listening to this and 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 the message resonates we'll be always keen to connect have a conversation build relationships i'm a big believer in building relationships and building network um so very open to that yeah uh, great 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 to hear that so um how can people connect with you and you mentioned getting connected so i know you are active on linkedin is linkedin a good place or you want to share an email i think linkedin is the best place to connect with me also you can connect with me on instagram i'm very active on instagram so it's uh my handle is nabi mariam linkedin my handle is also nabi mariam uh i'm not that active on twitter um so those would be the the channels and um you can also email me it's nabi at coverhero.com.au so if you want to reach out feel free to email me or reach out to me on my socials all right great great it's been super amazing speaking with you nabi uh, thank you thank you thank you very much for coming on it's such a pleasure uh and this is the beauty of technology that i could be sitting in in my living room and you are in a totally different part of the world a part of the world that i am dying yeah. to go to to connect and have a conversation <laughs> uh on something that we are both passionate about yeah great great uh, you you're welcome you're welcome anytime you're welcome we don't have spiders here so don't be scared <laughs> <laughs> Hi Intro Tech Business Series. Thank you for the good work that you're doing. Your podcasts are always interesting, thought-provoking and educational. I am Ines and I'm following you from Johannesburg, South Africa. Welcome back everyone. I'm sure that you enjoyed that conversation. I mean, it's been so exciting for me. I'd had to put this up on my social media a while ago and a lot of people have been asking questions about how we's going to be the policy holder, who is going who, who are we I mean, with insurance for what would the insurance cover and how exactly are we supposed to provide insurance products and innovative products to this particular aspect of this emerging economy. And I'm sure that Nabi was able to answer the most of these questions from the conversation. She was able to analyze how it is important that this is the time that we cater to this gig economy. Damola, what was your take on? Yeah, I think there are a lot of learnings, right? And it's important that we have that learning mindset, right? That's the first thing. And that's one thing that I usually encourage, especially looking at the fact that we are looking to create new things in the insurance space. So, when I mean, talking about the the gig economy, it's it's a growing space like she explained and there's need for us to be purposeful and intentional about you know, this segment and say hey, what are their peculiarities and how can we create solutions for them that would be important to them. We're speaking of um, we're talking about the fact that yes, there are 
life insurance products in the market. They are, you know, all of these products in the market. But do these products cater for them? Does it make sense to them? Does it have, you know, the consideration of their peculiarities in terms of, you know, the flexibility of their work, you know, the fluctuation in terms of their income and things like that. So those are some of the variables that we that are going to creation of all of these new products and new solutions for for that segment. So I mean I, I like the fact that you talked about the fact that it's unconventional and then the fact that we need to look at factoring all of those peculiarities in making this insurance product and you know services to this emerging market. And it just boils down to the fact that these are the things that we need to start looking at, especially in Africa. I've, I've often heard a lot of people say, I don't think it's possible. But then this is someone that has actually proven that it is very possible. It is necessary at this point in time. And I remember when we started talking um, at the beginning, we we're talking about people that are making impacts in some of this um, passion economy in the industry, for instance, the entertainment industry. And this is obviously not, um, we're not, we're not just talking about, it's not just exclusive to this category of people. It's also to people that um, um, are having a bit of, I mean, as long as you are into one gig or the other, you could be a photographer, mm-hmm. um, a Uber driver, blogger, anything, as long as it's, it's a gig and you know, the income is not as steady. It is important. And so I, I think that this is the time where our insurance and insurtech startups need to start looking inward to see how to create those market experiences for people that we've acclaimed are not buying insurance. Perhaps we need to look from a different angle that the insurance we're selling don't exactly cater to their need. And so they would obviously not participate in buying those types of insurance. But when we begin to look at, okay, um, you have, for instance, um, somebody called one of the social media influencers, um, probably called um, Taoma. Most of our source of income would obviously be from content creation as well as from, you know, our cameras and all of that. So imagine you coming to sell her um, fire insurance or you are asking her to come and buy motor insurance. The first thing she would want to secure would be a source of income before any other thing. And I think that this actually just brought it to the fore that it is important for us to start assessing and, you know, nursing and providing services to this particular market is emerging. And it means that there's a lot of opportunities in that market space. Something that is growing would obviously need um, a lot of backups. Uh, And I think this is how we can provide adequate financial services and solutions to this category of people. Tamala, any other thoughts? Yeah, I mean, you you, you just said what's what's on my mind. And uh, again, it was quite an interesting uh, conversation. Uh, I mean, I, I definitely would not go without mentioning the fact that, yes, you know, yeah, she's a woman, right? And we've spoken to a number of, of amazing women on the podcast and, you know, very interesting how much that has been done uh, or she's doing, you know, currently. And we're super proud and and excited to be a part of that story, even with the podcast. And there are a lot of other amazing women in the, in the industry within Africa and even outside who are doing equally amazing stuff and just want to say use this opportunity to say kudos to you and and keep it up one of the things that we want to do again is um, through our insurtech business series a women in insurance project is to have a webinar which we will communicate soon to discuss about how we can tap into the value that women bring to the industry so yeah super excited about you know what the future holds and well done well done nabi and well done to every other woman out there yeah, thank you. I think it's um, quite important that you brought that, brought that up. And I hoping that you also participate in it. I mean, an offshoot of the Choose to Challenge as well. This is one of the things that this, these women are doing in this industry, trying as much as possible to challenge status quo, thinking outside the box, you know, and as, as much as possible, bringing in opportunities from, you know, all parts of the world. So yes, make sure that you do attend when we send the details via our LinkedIn channel as well as Twitter and every other social media platform. We'll be very happy to have you participate in that webinar. And on that note, I want to say thank you to everybody um, for your participation, for listening as well as engagement. We 
sincerely appreciate that. And we are also saying that you should stay safe. As much as we don't like to admit it, there's still coronavirus. And it's also good to have a healthy mind and a healthy body as well. So try as much as possible to rest. I'm also telling Damola to take good rest as well. And, um, you know, we'll stay in touch. Until next time. Again, I remain fully me and my co-host. Yeah, Damola, do stay safe and don't forget to like, share, and leave a review if you enjoyed the, the podcast. So thank you very much and take care of yourself. Bye.